Hi gang, Scott here. We're going to have a look at the color enhancer filter in On One Photo Raw. Now, this is different than the color adjustment filter. Color enhancer, it's been around in the On One products for a long time. And uh, quite honestly, I don't use it very often, if at all, anymore. And I'll explain why. I'll show you where this filter came from. You know, why does it exist? Why do we still have it? And there is one use case that I still have for it. And it's uh, more of a specialized case but I've got the tool to do it. Really quick, if you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you're thinking about adding Photo Raw to your toolkit or any of the plugins that On One has, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there. Save you a little bit of money. Now, first, let me dissect the anatomy of this color enhancer. This photo here, you'll notice I already have the color adjustment applied. And we'll get back to that in a minute. But let's just take a look at the color enhancer and how is it broken down. It's got three main sections, color, purity, and color range. And you're looking at these going, oh, a lot of this stuff looks familiar. You know, why do I seem to recognize a lot of these things? Well, it's like the top half of it is stuff we haven't developed now in tone and color. We have color controls to adjust white balance and all of those things, you know, saturation, etc. And we have the purity section. And then the lower half, where we have all the different color channels, that's the same as the color adjustment tool. And so the first thing I want to show you is, as far as color adjustments go, I don't reach for the color enhancer anymore. I reach for color adjustment, just because it gives me a smaller set of tools, the things I really need. In this photo here, let me open up the color adjustment that I have. And I have the desert style applied. Well, I have that same style here in the color enhancer. Now, I'm going to double down on desert for a minute. And the reason is we'll just go back and forth between the two. All right, so let me collapse this down. So we're just looking at, all right, here is the adjustments with the color enhancer. And it's kind of like do this, before, after. Kind of looks the same. Before, after. Looks the same. I'm toggling between the tools but applying that same desert style to adjust the color ranges the same way we do with the color adjustments. If you haven't watched the color adjustment video, have a look at that. It explains how to adjust all these different color channels. The color enhancer, we have all those same controls down here, just like we did in color adjustment. They work the same, and in practice, I just don't reach for them. I use color adjustment. All right, so what about the other sections of the tools? Well, color enhancer, we have all of this stuff. We've got the color section and the purity section. The color section, this is the same as what we have in develop. The advantage with the filters is we could mask. So if I needed to adjust temperature, tint, saturation, vibrance selectively anywhere in the photo, we have the masking tools and the controls to do it. But in practice, I'll reach for a local adjustment because local adjustments have all of those controls and more. This is like my develop panel with my masking options. So in practice, I don't use the color enhancer to do any type of localized tonal or temperature adjustments. I'll reach for a local adjustment instead. They'll both work the same way, and it's just a matter of preference. But a color enhancer, I just tend not to reach for. And it's kind of the, the, the tool almost suggests I don't want to be working with color, but Often I'm wanting to work with like temperature and tone, and I just gravitate toward locals now. So what does that leave us in the color enhancer? Well, one section, purity. Now what purity does is it keeps our brightest brights clean. You know, it doesn't take on a yellowish, dingy cast, and our shadows clean, not taking on like a bluish purple cast. This color enhancer tool can be useful if you need to have a localized change for purity. And that's the use case that I have for it today. And this photo is a good example of that. Up in the sky here, we've got this nice bright area of sky. And watch as I push purity. I'm going to push it very far to the right. I'm going to see all of the color drain from the highlights. Right? But this yellowish part that's in the middle of like where the sun is coming through, I found that to be just a little bit less yellow and more white. I can push highlights over in the purity section. Then I have my masking tools. And in this case, let's open up our masking tools. For this one, I'll do a luminosity mask. Let's take a look at it. That looks great. Um, 
we'll grab an edges shape and kind of just shrink this down really, really, really small so that we're only affecting this area. And keeping in mind, I'm only affecting highlights within highlights. So the luminosity mask is only affecting highlights. It's, the mask is protecting the shadow areas. And then on top of that, the purity slider is only affecting highlights. So then the result, even if I push this really far, you know, you'll see a little desaturation there. But now I can rein in those yellowish highlights just ever so precisely. And that is really the one use case that I have left for the color enhancer. So why do we still have the color enhancer in on one if we basically have one use case for it left? You know, why not, why, why keep the tool? Why not just bake that into locals? Well, maybe those purity sliders will work their way into the local adjustments eventually. But the reason the tool still exists is because it's been around for a long time and we've built presets using them for many, many years. The color enhancer tool was the tool we had to do individual HSL adjustments in those color channels with masking. And if you've built up presets over time that use the color enhancer, well, I suppose there could have been some manipulation to map it over to another tool and so forth, or just keep the tool there. Don't take away things I've used in the past. Leave it there so my old stuff continues to work exactly the same way. And when you bring in a new tool, well, maybe that becomes the tool of choice over time. So there's some uh, history that goes with the color enhancer and why it's still in the tool today. But it does have a use case, and it's this highlights purity. The same idea for shadows as well. If you need to have localized shadow purity, the color enhancer will help you out. It becomes a little bit of a misnomer because in my use cases, I use it for pure highlights and pure shadows but the tool's called Color Enhancer. But I hope this video gives you a feel for, you know, why is the tool still here? What's it useful for? And this is the case that I use it for. Everything else, develop for global stuff, color adjustment for color work, and locals for localized temperature, et cetera, things like that. I hope you found it useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.